This group breathed new life back into CSU women's basketball. One of my reasons for coming here was I wanted to help try to change this program around, put, get it back to how it used to be. It's been one of my dreams since I was a little kid. We were all brought from around the world to win. We turned this program around and the CSU is going to be back. No, it's over! When we first started practice, you could tell that this group, they were just different. They were all about winning, playing together, and an unselfishness. Honestly, we just started playing together and it clicked. You know, it's, it's really rare that that happens sometimes, and it was a really special team this year. And, you know, I don't think we expected to do as well, any of us expected to do as well as we ended up doing. I would have probably put us there as well. There were just so many unknowns coming into the year with all these new faces. It made us work harder. It made us want to be successful. All of the new faces were told the same thing, like, you're coming in here to win. We're versatile. Everyone can shoot. Good. Sam Martin. Everyone can be in the post. Thompson on the right block. Spins into the lane. Fading jumper is good. I think that that made us a really hard team to guard. 17th ranked Buffaloes escape from this one after getting quite the scare from the hometown ramp. I remember sitting in the office after that game that night and yeah, disappointed that we had lost and we, how we could have got them, but we're going to be pretty darn good. Britt Ryder breaks down the defense, hangs at the free throw line and hits the jump shot. Rams needed that. Clears some space for Ryder. She rolls to the basket, big shots up and good for Martin. That's the only ball goes into Denise Drum and a floater from the free throw line is good. Having those early games like that kind of gave us confidence to show us like we can be pretty good and we're supposed to be pretty good. It's a steal by Ryder. We're at the pass. They've got a two-on-one break. Outlet to A.J. Newton tries to run right side. Big shots up and good. It sounds super cliche, but it was really like one game at a time. I know like the media was really, oh, you won 17 out of the last 18 games. And we we're like, oh, really? Like that's cool, but we need to keep winning. I don't even remember as, as like we were thinking, oh, this is the game we have to win. We were just like, this is another game we, and we need to win because we're the better team and we need to protect Moby. Obviously when the game progressed, it was super exciting. The conference is soon ours. So. Well, we're going to cut down the nets unless we won the, the conference title outright. You know, we had another great crowd and it was awesome that as many people stuck around for like 45 minutes as, as they did to see this happen. They've been supporters of the program, even when people stopped supporting the program. It was just like, yeah, it was huge. Then when it went into overtime, I was like, oh, now they're probably going to leave. And then I just looked around, everyone just kept standing in the stands, like joined us on the floor. Um, and that was definitely like a big experience, how, how much like our fans means to us and also how much we mean to the fans. We've got great, great support here, and to be able to share it with all the people that helped us make this happen, there's nothing better. Almost unexplainable what that felt like. I mean, I've never cut a net down before, and it's been one of my dreams since I was a little kid. It was special to do it here because you know how, how this program has struggled. And just to be a part of that, like, the whole turnaround, it was just amazing. And you never get tired of cutting down nets. <laughs>
and to do it in such fine style. You can't, uh, you can't script a better ending. We celebrate not only a Mountain West Championship and not only a victory in the Border War, but also the careers of our three seniors. You don't win a league championship without having really good senior leadership. Those kids have been the, the program warriors. Who'd have thought a year ago, who'd have thought six months ago that we'd be standing here in the middle of this floor celebrating a Mountain West Conference Championship. It's a phenomenal testimony to Coach Ryan Williams, his staff, and to these great ladies, and I can't think of a better way to send off three great seniors than by giving you all that trophy. Thanks, and let's go win a tournament championship as well. Welcome to day two of the Mountain West Championships presented by Rhesus. It's the eight versus one matchup. The league champion, Colorado State Rams and the Utah State Aggies. We had a very, very difficult draw in that we had to beat a Utah State team that really was not an eight seed. Schlott breaks the 7-0 run for the Rams. Extremely talented and had a really grind out a victory there. Neistrom from the paint, short, Martin, and one! Schlott left alone with the clock winding down. It's over, Colorado State holds on to defeat Utah State. And then to play a border war in the semifinals was, those are emotional games. They might share a border, but they don't share a lot of love. A Wyoming right. and Colorado State. It's we wanted to beat Wyoming. We wanted to kind of prove that first game where they beat us by 20 plus was, that was a fluke. That was pass tipped away by Nystrom. Newton. In regulation, we, we were really in control and you could see that. And with two fouls, Dent knew she had to let her go. At the same time, you also know that Wyoming's got some tremendous bullets, and they're capable of, of scoring it in a hurry. Maletto, how about that pass from the block? It just got to the point where it became a really, really good college basketball game. Kick, Ryder, deep three, off the glass and in! Eight, two, one for the win! We're heading to overtime. I knew it was going to be a kind of game like that because both teams were so competitive. But I didn't know it was going to be a triple overtime game. <laughs> at the end of the first overtime, tied at 73. And I was like, oh my gosh, just end this. I remember one time I wanted to get down in the stands defensively, and I like bent it down a little bit on my legs and started like shaking. Caleb blocked by Thompson, gets it back. Ryder trying for some space, comes in, Raider with the block, Ryder gets it back and connects on the reverse. Leto got the three. Well, I'm having a deja vu moment right now. Here we go again, it's coming down to free throws. To see Hana go in and shoot two free throws and she hasn't played the whole game. Mess Dog gets a pair, three point lead, 95-92, Landry. For three, good look. No, it's over. Colorado State wins it in triple overtime. I was so, it, it gives me goosebumps talking about it. Have, have Haley come in and grab like huge rebounds and Hannah making those two free throws when everyone else has been struggling the whole game. And like, just be, like be ready for their moment. That was just epic to me, I loved it. It was really fun to play in the championship game, to get to that point, first of all, in the conference tournament. And such an emotional game the night before. Um, it was just, uh, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, but our kids fought, I, I thought, admirably. First for the visitors from Cedar City, Utah, the University of Southern Utah Thunderbirds. To earn the automatic berth in the, the WNIT was, that's very rewarding. So many teams don't have a, like, don't get to play at all, so it was still an honor, but I think it was in the back of our heads, like, this is not what we want to be. This year it's a WNIT next year, like, who knows what's going to happen, like, we're rebuilding this program and this is one of the first steps, and we just got to, we got to get, we got to win these, but 
you know, it was it's a great step for this program and getting us back on track to how it used to be. Being here for four years, I've seen it grow. I've seen every year how we've gotten better and how we've progressed. We just have, everyone has a personality, so I think when you're bringing in 15 different personalities and they all click, like, that's special. It doesn't happen very often. Moby Madness will be back in, in fine style next year, and I, there's not a doubt in my mind that this group will just take off from where they, they left off. People are going to talk about this team for a long time, for a lot of reasons. Uh, they rekindled the, the CSU fire. I just hope that that this year and probably next year too is the beginning of like the turnaround and CSU is going to be back on like what it was back when Becky Hammond days. Who knows, maybe it will be like our days in, t in 20 years.